Hey, everyone. Hi, Sagittarius. Okay, um, anyone new to Opal Oracle, welcome. And anyone returning, hi. All right, so <clears throat> I have uh, an announcement. It's very important, okay? Just a second. This is just some pine needles that I found on the ground that Mother Nature um, got rid of by herself. It smells really good. Pine has a lot of uh, positive properties, okay? There's a lot of protection in pine. It produces testosterone. Um, it excretes it in a way. Um, it also helps with depression. So if you happen to live in a place that has a lot of pine, it's helpful. There's a reason for the, it being around you, okay? Now, before I begin, I have a message. I've been doing a lot of meditating, okay? Um, it hasn't been easy feeling all these feelings, okay? I know that there's a lot of energy going on for everyone, but I specifically have some very strong transiting uh, planets that are making me very sensitive, okay? Um, to energy overall, but because we're talking about, you know, I as your tarot reader, yeah, you know, whatever the energy is that I have to channel is, it's heavy on me, okay? And the med during my meditation, I realized, it's been coming to me for some time, but it's really coming to a head, okay? All this, uh, reflection that is necessary all the slowing down and not you know and it's interesting during leo season which is all about action and forward momentum right wanting to just do 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 whatever whatever the heart wants right um which the heart can be a little impatient sometimes um well the thing is is it's not about that it's about settling and again going over what it is and, and I any of you who supported and understood why I couldn't record and the information that I shared with you about these older uh, videos I hope that you watch them and that they helped you now in relation to tarot okay this is a sacred tool of divination okay you don't have to use tarot to see things, um, but it is it is not a joke, okay? And with tarot, this tarot boom, if you will, that's happening, okay? It's important to understand the karmic repercussions to what people are doing with their power. Ca Saturn and Capricorn, there is great responsibility with great power, okay? So there's a few questions that I'm proposing for everyone to consider during this time. The first question is, is um, actually for you, you receive sort of a different question. Why is it that you watch the readers that you watch? Okay, I'm presuming that most of you watch multiple readers um, because we're seeking a particular kind of answer. A lot of people are. And through that expectation, when we don't receive the answer that we want, well, we keep asking the same question until we receive some sort of energetic response to be like, oh, right, that's how I feel. Um, now I can either continue what it is that I was doing or learn from whatever it is. Now, because there are a lot of tarot readers that are new to tarot, you can tell, for those of you who have been around, who is experienced and who is not, okay? Now, it's not to say that someone who is new to something is not in tune with it in a way, but what I'm proposing is if the internet was gone tomorrow, what would you do? Okay. Overall. Now, as a subsection, we're talking about if tarot disappeared tomorrow, if YouTube disappeared tomorrow, the internet, whatever, where you're seeking this guidance, um, what is it that you've learned from when you started watching until now? 
and an easy way for you to determine whether the because some people are pulling from the ether some people are pulling some people are pulling from above some people are pulling from below it all depends on whether what kind of vibration they're trying to fulfill okay some people are just doing things for money some people are doing it for fame other people it's it, some people are doing it out of the kindness of their heart okay and the way that you can determine who is for your greatest good and who is not is by having a notebook, okay? And when you watch tarot, watch the reader that you watch, okay? Take notes. What is it that you're learning from them? And then reflect on those notes throughout the month, okay? Keep them in a place where you can access them and see how you're working through those energies, okay? Because if what you're receiving for energy is helpful, you'll know that it is because there will be good questions for you to consider within yourself. If it is for more of the base, uh, lower vi frequency vibration, etc., then you'll understand that what that reader told you in ways of notes won't, it won't be productive. It will be very simple for you to be able to tell, okay? Now, Sagittarius for August. We want to learn, right? Sagittarius. 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 Perfect. I preach this on the bottom, good. Now, just a second. You have five major arcana, not including the high priestess, just on the board. The five is here. You have six total with the high priestess. The lovers is here. I see for a lot of you, the, there is great consideration to making a decision about what love means. And of course, yes, these are relationship readings, but for those of you who are new, this is a relationship with yourself. It's where it all begins, okay? And it's a long life, it's a lifelong process, you know? Okay, just a second. I feel the need to say this for some reason. This is important. Anyone who has Gemini, Libra, Taurus, Scorpio, Capricorn, moons this will be relevant also those sun signs if you're cross watching for another part of your chart this is strong okay there's a reason those of you who have that specifically and of course those houses in your chart okay are what you are figuring out how to balance okay the second house the third house the 7th, the 8th, and the 10th. These are also probably numbers that will be important to you during the month, okay? And I heard it may even affect you next month on those dates. So it would be important to, again, take note of that, okay? Particularly the 2nd. For some of you, the 28th is also important, okay? Now, I see that you're finally, in a way, deciding to have a conversation with your own shadow side. And that's very important, okay? You're having a conversation with it because you're understanding, you're gaining a new clarity within your mind about, well, where your imbalances actually lie, 
and I sense with the lie, it, it has something to do with dishonesty, but it's dishonesty within your own self in a way. But it's not, it's not prevalent like all the time. It's just where you're going through life and say, things are good, right? Things are good. You totally understand that life is a blessing and then it's really beautiful. And you know, for some of you, you have wonderful children and you, you're in a relationship, you know, some of you, some of you that are married, I see that your, your marriage is very prosperous at times. Of course, there are troubles within it. I think that there are difficulties in most things, you know, but even that it's the marriage with yourself. Okay. We're talking about also the seventh house. It's like your, your marriage to your home, your marriage to your husband or your wife, your marriage to your job, to your everyday moment of your life. You are married to you. You know, how, how do you, well, I heard, how do you woo you? <laughs> That's cute. I see that any of you who have like addiction problems, um, whether this is like physically, like drinking or smoking, I mean, of course, drug use, but I think most of my, most of the folks here are, I think a little bit older and kind of figured out that that's not for them, right? That that's not really productive. Um, but even still, anything like that, also um, any kind of codependency within your relationship, whether it was like maybe something that you had in the past or something that's still affecting you now, um, because you do have you have the devil and the six of and the six, the lovers. You can see here it is the same card. It's just which end are you on, okay? And I see in a way that sometimes it fluctuates, right? I see that, um, but the, the darker aspects of your emotional well-being, and it, it, it's sort of about the, it shows me the expression of, Because I feel like sometimes you, when things get a little too heavy, you got too much on your plate, you know, you're worried about the bills, um, or about your children, or again, about your relationship, or about work, like, you almost say fuck it to your emotions, in a way. You're like, I don't have time for that, is what I heard. But the thing is, is... Um, while Saturn is in retrograde, okay, it's important to take this time to slowly walk through the subterranea of your own mind, okay? Really go in there, even if it's just a few minutes a day. I see specifically for a lot of you, if you can do an eight minute, eight is a sacred number. It's Scorpio's house. It's about change, okay? it's important to take advantage of this Jupiter and Scorpio, okay? This Jupiter and Scorpio is asking everyone, actually, um, you know, I, I put the pieces together today, and basically, Jupiter's been in Scorpio for nine months. So, oh, just a second, please. This is my alarm. It's 111 right now. To take a minute um, and uh, just to say thank you for all the things that I have and, um, and for this life and just to kind of settle myself. You want to take, want to take a minute with me? Okay, it's about 14 minutes right now. It's your card.
Okay. It brightens everything, you know. See, for some of you, you're still dealing um, a little bit in your deep psyche about your father, whether they're alive or not. Um, it could also be the father of your children, um, but the father plays an important role, um, and it does affect your relationships, okay? When, when your relationship goes from this into this is because of anything unchecked and not quite solidified. Um, it can be within your mind you've solidified it and you're starting to, you're working through it emotionally, um, but the emotions aren't finished yet, okay? Now what I was saying about Scorpio is what I put together is that it's nine months Scorpio, Jupiter and Scorpio, so everyone's been digging up these graves, right? Scorpio basically was like, here's the key to the cemetery. Here's the key, Here, here's a shovel. Go dig up what you buried a long time ago because they're tired of hanging on to it, right? It's heavy for them. They have to feel all your emotions, everyone's emotions when they don't deal with it. All water signs do, but particularly Scorpio has to deal with heavy things and it affects how they think. It affects their, um, their stability in their own mind and um, it's polite to consider how your actions affect others, okay? Um, and having a good balance of that. Now, with it being nine months, so basically, you know, we've been digging, digging, digging nine months. Well, now we have the rest of this time. We have August, September, October, November. We have four months left, that's Aries. Okay, figuring out, now you've done all this work to figure out who I am, who I am is in relation to the whole, okay? And now what we have to do is fill it in. We have to actually fill the hole. We have to make sure everything's cleared out of there that we want to clear out of there because with this new moon, the next 18 years will, will this new moon will determine, in a way, the next 18 years, what it is that you're doing, what it is that's around, what it is that you're thinking about. You know, of course, there's uh, free will in between to choose, but it really matters what you think about is what makes the stability of, of this space and time and into the future. It's kind of a portal, okay? So whatever we bury and whatever's left in there, we're going to have to deal with it later, okay? And that's the truth of it. But I feel like you already understand this in a way. Saturn and Capricorn, everyone's sort of thinking ahead, like, what is 20 years from now? What is eight years from now? What is 10 years from now? You know, it's not 10 minutes, it's 10 years. And that's important to think about, okay? Not having too much expectation about it and then nervousness like, oh, I don't, how, am I, how could I ever afford to X, Y, and Z? You know, um, Am I experienced enough to do it? Like, do I have enough energy at this point in my life, I heard, um, to begin again, right? That's also what the sun is, is like a brand new start. But I see that um, the more that you understand the imbalances and the cycles that you've been looping around in sort of whatever the troubles are or the frustrations are that you keep coming back to, no matter what, no matter how sunny it is, right? No matter how much you got your mind in order and like you're just doing it, right? These are powerful cards. It's like something pulls you back in. Um, I see that during Leo season, you can, it'll really shine a light on what it is that you're still afraid of, that you're still kind of clinging on to. Um, There's also this water sign that's always here for you. I don't know if that's another part of your chart again or like somebody actually, I feel like it's physically in your life, but usually it's the page, but you have the, the king here now. 
it's like, you know, maybe your kid, like somebody's growing up. You know what I mean? And um, I think you're starting to sort of see yourself in them in a way, or there's some sort of connection, mentally speaking, to where, where, like, again, how the cycles connect. Okay, like how, when you're looping back around, it's like you know you're gonna come to the same space again, and the next time that you come there, you can have a different position on the wheel, okay? I see by your birth month, it's important for you to really figure out um, what it is that you're still hanging on to. Between now and then, you really wanna, you gotta figure it out, okay? Like, what are you still afraid of? Where is it that anyone has abandoned you? Um, I see abandonment as a big one. Like whoever, whatever left your life, anything that was torn, what feels like torn away from you, things like that. Um, I also see that, uh, I want a little bit of advice on this two, okay, pentacles because the seven of cups came out again, but it came out with the page and the, the um, wands because I sort of saw like a new venture here of sorts, like something fit, something new in the physical world. And the more that you love yourself, the more that you know yourself, like the own structures of you, your own internal worth and knowing, you have to know that in your mind, okay? Um, I see that you, you can start something brand new and creative if you want to. Remember, Jupiter's coming into your sign. So that's Jupiter in the first house, right? So you're going to be figuring out like who that you are. Now, of course, whoever, whatever has, Scorp uh, has Sagittarius, et cetera. But I see for you, it's like kind of what you do now is what will affect you in... It really affects your home, okay? It really affects um, those of you who are female, specifically, um, like how you connect with, and of course it could be male or female, but I see it as, um, I guess it goes back to, it's either or, it's either or. It's, I see whatever it is that you're, that you're, Trouble, I heard troublesome about figuring out, like, how do I sort this out? How do I lessen my load, but in an efficient way? I see that you have two, and you go all the way to the page, and just one, right? Well, instead of two things, two hands, it's one thing, two hands, right? You get a better grasp on it. You have such a better grasp on the situation. Um, I do see it'll take... It'll probably take until Scorpio season to figure that out again with the whole Jupiter Scorpio. Remember what you've been digging. Take the time to consider, like, sit and be quiet with your mind like we did with that, you know, maybe set a timer of a, of a time of day that you know that you're always available, you know. And if you have a busy life, you got kids and, you know, all this stuff or you got a really busy job. It's like, well, m either make it in the, wake up extra early and do it in the morning, which obviously any time of day is good, whatever suits you, you know, or of course you can always do it before you go to bed. You'll sleep better that way. But, you know, whatever you think about will be what it is that you're going to create. And you have an opportunity to really create something solid. Um, You know, it's about being sweet, too. There's a lesson of being really sweet. Like, so sweet that you don't even... It, it seems almost unnatural how sweet... It, it's, like, too sweet, almost. But it's just about well, being sweet to yourself, right? Because being sweet makes this one 
makes this challenging shadow turn into light. That's what, that's what sweetness does. You know what I mean? Like I said before in that other reading, um, you know, really taking the time to ask yourself daily, what am I inspired by? Especially when you become annoyed with someone. It's like asking yourself, okay, what is it about this person that makes me, in, what, how am I inspired by them? And then also asking yourself the same thing, like what inspires me about me? Right? That's the sweetness to spread to yourself and to others. It totally diminishes any kind of frictional energy, okay? Gratitude really is the... Scorpio knows change is evident and it is so healthy to change. Even if you love you all day, it's like we still change all the time. And that's the truth of the matter, right? Look at that. That's Taurus. This is Scorpio. There's a strong mess with this Uranus also, which you have in your sixth house, right? Which is about work and it's about your health. I see that it's very important for you to be sweet on yourself, to take care of yourself, okay? Life is short. What, how, do is, how is it that you want to feel? How is it that you want to react in your relationships with others and with yourself, okay? You have that choice to choose. You are of sound mind, okay? Pure emotional expression of self. Maturely. My grandpa always used to say mature. Being mature. Right? Being loving and mature. Mature. All right. I love you so much. Enjoy August. Take it easy. Um, take care of yourself.